Many young designers dream of the success of Vivian Westwood or Jean-Paul Gaultier, but few actually get there. The recession killed off thousands of small fashion companies. Colleges now steer students towards large textile or retail companies. If they're lucky, they'll then climb the design ladder. I didn't want to work for industry. You're just lost when you go there. They don't expect you to start off as a fashion designer yourself at all. You have to go out and work you know, in the industry or work for another designer, which means all your talent's going to waste. <laughs> Students yearn for personal success, so struggle on their own. And I spent two years living on the poverty line, making no money. Sadia left college three years ago and set up in business. She worked hard and did sell some designs, but the retailers failed to pay on time. And then only gave her a tiny fraction of the sale price. I almost had to close down my business at one point because I was owed money for about a year and a half. A lot of young designers start out thinking only on the design side of their business and haven't uh, given adequate thought to the planning, the marketing and the overall business strategy and don't know where to turn. The most important thing for them to be is open-minded and actually find partners to help them on the areas where they're less strong. Carlos and Louise run a small design company, but neither have business training. They sought advice, yet they still meet problems with manufacturers and suppliers. Well, basically, large manufacturers won't touch a small designer because their uh, machines will have, are set to do like 2,000 garments a day, and we're only looking for orders of 30 or 40. This means young designers have to use outworkers, machinists working from home. The fashion industry is often criticised for exploiting cheap labour, but designers say outworkers are no worse off than they are. There's a lot of exploitation in the fashion industry, especially in the rag trade side of things. People will be paid a few pence to make up garments, whereas I pay people a few pounds per garment and they make as much money as I do. But the outworker system does leave the designer vulnerable to mistakes. They should be two perfect lines. This would be rejected by a retailer. They wouldn't be able to sell it, and it's my loss. The prospect of having to face problems such as these is causing a whole new generation of British fashion designer to leave the country. Sharon Abdullah, who graduated from St. Martin's College of Art last year, is already considering going abroad to look for work. I'm trying to find work in Britain. Unfortunately, the state of British fashion at, at the moment is, is pretty dire, so I'm, I'm looking to go abroad now. What's happening in New York at the moment is quite exciting. Designers seem to get much more respect, I feel. I'm young and I was wasting myself in England. I felt I was desperate to be given opportunity that just wasn't coming. Camille moved to New York after her own business in Britain folded two years ago. Now she's a success and sells her designs to Crunch Gear, a sportswear company. You'll always find an investor here or a few investors and get a choice, you know. Um, that's unheard of in my experience in Britain. If you're going to make it as a young designer, you have to have a lot of determination. You have to have money to set your business up and you have to work very, very hard. 